At the Veterans Cemetery in Suffolk, you see a sea of heroes no longer with us. Every name etched as their legacies live on. You know, you can like kind of see the condition of some of the stones. The graves aren't nearly as organized in West Point Cemetery in Norfolk. Here we're walking up to a section that's dedicated to Civil War African American Union soldiers and sailors. And there you'll find something that is just not resting well with local historian Georgia Jean. This is Frank Cornick's stone. Well, maybe it is. I think. Or maybe it's the one next to it. As time has moved on, you have to kind of figure out who they are by trying to feel the letters. The memories of the veterans haven't faded. You can't tell who this person is. But what has is some of the names on the stones. You can't remember someone really well without a name. Time is taking a toll on the markers. As they are slowly withering away, history is literally erasing right before our eyes. How would you feel if you had a stone and no one cared about it and 100 years later, despite a great sacrifice, um, you were lost. The issue isn't confined to Norfolk. The only thing you can make out is that he was a member of the first U.S. Colored Cavalry. Nadia Orton has ancestors buried at Mount Cavalry Cemetery in Portsmouth. And once we came here and found them, but then saw all the other grave sites and how hard they were to read and broken. That included nearly two dozen African-American Civil War vets. I've been studying him for eight years. I still don't know who he is. Orton has made it her mission to recover the lost identities. Some have eluded her. I've tried wetting the stone, taking pictures in different light conditions. You're not really supposed to try to trace or do rubbings, but I did try that once. It didn't work. And I thought maybe if I could even identify his company, which should be here, I could try to narrow it down. There are others who have been saved. His story is amazing because it's not just relegated to his military service, but everything he did for the community after the war. The federal government replaces veteran stones free of charge, but there has to be a name in proof of service. Orton has applied for and has received 20 replacements. Once that is done and the stone is here and it's installed and you can stand there and think, you know, I helped save this part of history. Orton and Jean would love to see others pitch in. You know, maybe we can find some sort of community effort to get together and get these people you know, get these people recognized for their sacrifice. And help save history before it becomes just that. Their entire lives are going to be lost if you can't read a name. And you wonder at that point how many, how many stories, how many legacies, how many tales of bravery are being lost because their names are fading away. Something that simple, but it's so profound.